Okay, everyone. Welcome, Pranjal, who was winner of Smart India Hackathon 2023 in the software category. Today, he is with us to guide all of us, like regarding what are the various levels, how to be a winner in SIH. So, stay tuned till the last. And Pranjal, let's start this video with your. Um. So, hi everyone. I am Pranjal Kishore, a pre-final year student, currently doing my B.Tech in Computer Engineering. So as mentioned last year, I had the privilege to participate in the Smart India Hackathon, where me and my team emerged as the winners. So today I'm excited to share my experience with you all guys, and thank you so much to Pasna for having me here. Congratulations, Sanjil, for your win. So let's start the video. First, coming to like being a fresher. If anyone is watching this video, so what is Smart India Hackathon? Like what? Intro you can give it for it. Um, so the Smart India Hackathon, um, it is actually one of India's biggest national level hackathon. Because when you think about the hackathon, it is a what is a problem solving challenge. So the problem statements that are given under the Smart India Hackathon that are actually put by the government of India. So you can say that the problem statements are actually some real life problems that are faced by the ministries and the governments of India, and even some private limited. When they can't find a solution to their problem, they often list their problem statements under the SIS portal. And if we just go and explore the problem statements, you'll see that um, all the problem statements are uh, under different types of themes. Themes define the background of the problem statement. So, like there are different themes like agriculture, smart vehicles, heritage and culture, and etc. And you'll be having two categories where you can participate: mainly the software category and the hardware category. Yeah, like they on their website there are various ministries and yes, you can visit the you can visit the SIS portal website. There you can see a list of like there are more than I feel two hundred formal statements and there are uh, two tracks for you to participate. Okay, so next coming to what are various levels in Smart India Hackathon if someone is participating this year? Um, so the various level of the Smart India Hackathon. So before reaching the real hackathon is the actually the grand finale of the Smart India Hackathon. So to qualify for that, first of all you need to what I'll say clear two stages before that. So first is the what is it the internal hackathon that is conducted at every college or whatever institution what you uh, what you are studying in. So the main motto of this internal hackathon is actually SIS asks the institution to send a maximum of I feel 10 to 15 teams. So every institution wants to send their best teams. So they conduct an internal hackathon at their place, and whatever teams they feel are capable of participating, they filter out that teams and that are sent to the next round. And then you have the round two, that is the what we'll say the PPT round. What you guys are required at that point is to submit an idea on the SIS portal about how what problem statement you are solving in, uh, what problem actually you are solving in, and um. Give details about your solution. Basically, what you need is to submit a presentation of your solution, and you need to mention uh, details about your solution. Try to add what we'll say, some photos and videos of prototype that you have built upon the time um, till the PPT round. And additionally, I'll say that um, once you have cleared this PPT round, you will be uh, actually assigned a nodal center. From there is the real hackathon start. So the grand finale of the Smart India Hackathon. It is a 36-hour event where you will be continuously being monitored by mentors and evaluators, and at the end of the 36 hours, um, they'll announce the results. So, like as you said, uh, we need to submit the prototype and the pictures, screenshots. So, yes, how yes. you presented your solution so that like juniors get motivated by like how to prepare their PPT. <coughs> So if you ask about the presentation, I'll be very honest that I was not the one who was making the PPT in my team, but the person who was making, he was a I'll say a next level of designer. So I'll give you some insights about it. So first of all, in a PPT, first of all, you need to be very clear and concise with your idea what you are presenting. Be very specific to the core of the problem statement. Don't deviate from your um, what the problem statement, the what the real problem is. Okay, so while presenting, I'll say that cover all the aspects of the solution that you know uh, that you need to present in your um, what we'll say in your problem statement and your solution, and try to add visuals like what we'll say. You can add um, flowcharts, diagrams. 
because the person who is looking at the ppt it helps them to get um, the idea of the solution what you are presenting apart from these things in the ppt round you are only required to submit one ppt so the judges don't know that whether you have built a prototype or what level um, or solution have you made so i'll say that it is better that you can add photos and video of your prototype so that it helps the person who is actually evaluating the your presentation it gives them it gives um, it gives you an edge over the other teams that may have not built a prototype or may have not mentioned that what level of solution have they built apart from these things i'll say that when you are what will say making the presentation please highlight your what is your uniqueness about your solution because this is the point that will what will say set you apart from the rest of the candidates and it is the strongest point that can may, um, uh, make you qualify for the next round okay pranjal next coming to uh, how was your scenario like uh, during the 36 hours uh, what you made what was your project if you can share with us um so actually i am not allowed to actually disclose the solution because the solution that we made it is currently under the patent phase and the patent has actually not been passed yet but i'd like to share my experience with um everyone who is this, who is watching this so you will be assigned nodal centers for the grand finale of the smart india hackathon so the nodal center that we were assigned was actually too far away it was um, at visakhapatnam near visakhapatnam actually so it almost took us a day to reach there we reached there just a day before the smart india hackathon and it was almost night at that time so if you talk about um, the starting day first of all you will have the inauguration ceremony and where they will tell you about the smart india hackathon what you will be participating in and what experience you uh, what experiences you can face in the 36 hours that you will be going to be participated and additionally they are going to tell you that what evaluation are they going to do with you and what all the teams have um, Uh, managed to come here so apart from these things if you talk about our team what a strategy was at that day we had clearly divided our task in advance and each team each team member knew that what role he or she would be playing at that point uh, at that point of time so uh, of course uh, even when uh, all the task was divided we needed to ensure that uh, we actually have 36 hours but still it is not infinite time we had to ensure that we come up with the solution in that limited uh, time that we had so what we did was we conducted regular what is status check to ensure that everyone was on track and you definitely can sit on all the 36 hour time and just um, type 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 and uh, go upon your work so definitely we took off uh, we often used to take breaks like one team member at a time or two team member at a time but most of the time we spent was on debugging and refining our project even on the i'll say on the finale day there were many mentors and evaluators who who were gen- generously coming to us and asking about a solution so i say that the advice that we got from there it helped us to refine the solution at that day and actually many people at that um, nodal center came to us and asked about a solution so whatever the insights they uh, give uh, about a solution i i'll say that it actually helped us to improve at that point additionally i'll say that the atmosphere at that time the atmosphere actually very difficult to define i'll say that it was too competitive like everybody was having such a hard time i'll say that but we had some motivations uh, in our minds at that point then i'll say that just 4 hours prior to the uh, the end of the hackathon we had a final pitching round then we presented our solution to the judges and thank god that they loved the solution and they had a lot of questions that they asked upon uh, the the solution that we made and since we were only making the solution so we had the answers uh, for them and that impressed them um, a lot so we had a hint that we had performed good and we were just then uh, waiting for the results to be announced and luckily uh, we emerged as the winners at that day so what secrets you want to share with the juniors to be the winner in SIH um so if you talk about the secrets i am I'm not secret i'll just um, be providing some advice to you guys i'll say that first of all make your team very compact because the primary state uh, before entering the hackathon is making a team so i'll say that don't just go with your normal friends or just 
helps to fill the slot that you are having of six members. Um, maybe I did not mention that, but actually for participating in the Smart India Hackathon, you need to have a team of six members and you need to have a one girl candidate minimum. So when you are uh, actually planning to make the team, I'll say that seek out new individuals and try to talk about their mindset, the skill set they are having and try to gather different people so that every individual that's in your team brings something different on the table. For example, like someone's good at front end, someone is very good at back end. There is someone for pitching. There is someone uh, who is good at AIML, someone who is very good at presentation. Like everybody should have um, different skills. So when you talk as a uh, team, you'll see that you have a combination of each and every skill set. Additionally, if you say, I'll say that while choosing a problem statement, I'll say that first of all, don't go for a problem statement that um, seems too simple to you because generally these are the problem statements where you will be facing very heavy type of competition. I'll say that first of all, don't target just one problem statement. Try to choose a bucket of problem statements and uh, research for the problem statements, what solutions you can come up with and what solution uh, currently has been made for that problem and try to ideate well, well along the research and then find a problem statement that is compact with you and your team. And I'll say that try to choose a problem statement where I'll say that you can build a working prototype because many a times it happens that you may ideate very well and you come up with a very good solution. But many times you don't have the resources that you need to, uh, that you actually need to uh, come up with a solution. Actually, this was one of the problems that we faced that we ideated very well. But when we came up with a, we needed to make a deep learning model, but at, actually there was no public data set for it. So we had to make a data set on our very own. So that was a challenging part for us. So I um, asked you guys to make a, uh, to choose a problem statement that allows you to actually make a, um, what we'll say, a prototype so that you are even comfortable with. Apart from these two points, I'll only say that try to be flexible because when you're participating in such a full-fledged hackathon, many a times you'll face um, what you'll face some situation that you may have never faced before. So at that type of time, your body may panic or you don't know what to do. I'll just say that stay calm at that point and just do what you are good at doing that. Okay, Pranjal, this was from my side. Um, like anything else you want to share? Um, anything else? If I'll say that actually don't go for the win, I'll say that when you go on participating at such a vast event, so um, what we'll say, the chances of winning are very less, but I'll say that your participation is something that is very important. If you are participating for the very first time, I'll um, ensure that um, the whatever the experience you are going through, whatever people you are participating with, your ideation, it is something that is going to teach you a lot. Winning is something that may not happen for the very first time. It comes with experience. So I'll uh, request you guys to come up with um, something different what you are thinking about and something new that always keep exploring something new that again say that winning is not that important I'll say. Okay, 